Hi there, and welcome back. Today we're going to read Chapter 6 of The Lost Puppy by Holly Webb. And what a cute puppy he is, huh? When we last left Christy, she was frantically looking for Lucky through the woods with her dad, running from place to place, calling his name and not finding him. She was very, very worried. And that's where we finished off. So let's pick up and see what's happening with our favorite puppy, Lucky. All right, here we go. Chapter six. I wish I knew what your name was, the man said to Lucky as he carried him down the road and back towards town. I suppose I'm going to have to keep calling you Pup. I'm Jake, by the way, he added, smiling down at Lucky who was curled into his elbow, watching everything they passed with anxious eyes. And we're going back to my place just for a little while, and then we'll take you down to the shelter, and hopefully your owners will come and find you. Lucky glanced up at Jake's face, his ears flattening a little. There was a worried tone to the man's voice again, and he didn't like that. Yes, I know. No one would leave you behind on purpose, surely. He sighed. Anyway, we're almost home. You're going to meet Mickey. He laughed. Mickey's going to get a shock when he sees you. I only went out for a quick jog. He searched in his pockets of his sweatpants for the keys as they came to a little white house. Lucky leaned forward, listening intently. He could hear the clicking of claws on the hard floor and a curious snuffling. There was a dog in there, and it had to be the one that the man smelled like. He shifted a little nervously in Jake's arms. Usually, he barked and barked at other dogs, but then he'd been with Christy. Lucky wanted everyone to know that she was his and that he was taking care of Anna and her. As the door swung open, a golden brown head peered slowly around it and stared suspiciously up at Lucky. Hey, boy, I've brought a visitor. Don't worry, I don't think he's staying that long. Jake tucked Lucky tightly under his arm and crouched down to give some attention to his old golden retriever, muttering a stream of reassuring words. It's lucky you're such a good boy, Mickey. You're not jealous. The pup's lost, poor little thing. We're going to have to help him get back home, that's all. Mickey eyed Lucky thoughtfully, and the Dachshund puppy stared back. Then he wagged his long, feathery tail a couple of times, very slowly, and turned around, pacing back towards the kitchen and his cushion. You're going to have to be gentle with Mickey, Jake told Lucky. He's an old gentleman, 12 years old, and he's a bit lame now. Don't go teasing him. He put Lucky down, watching carefully to see how he and Mickey were going to get along. Jake knew Mickey was really gentle, but he wasn't used to having other dogs in the house. Lucky looked around nervously and then sidled after Jake as he headed into the kitchen, too. I know there's a flyer from Oak Leaf Rescue Shelter here somewhere. I was going to send him some money, Jake muttered, searching through a pile of papers. And now I'm sending them a wiener dog instead. He pulled out a piece of paper covered in photos of dogs. Ah, good. You two all right? He looked down at Mickey, now curled up in his basket. Lucky was sniffing through around the kitchen, and around the cupboards and keeping his distance from the bigger dog. Okay, let's call them. He tapped in the number and then sighed. Huh, I should have known. It's six o'clock already. No one's answering the phone. He put the phone back in the cradle slowly and stared at Lucky. Now what are we going to do with you, pup? We'd better feed you, I suppose. That energy bar won't keep you going for long. He took a small bowl out of the cupboard and put it down a little way from Mickey's big bowl and then poured food into both of them from a huge bag. 
Lucky flung himself at it as though he was starving and gulped it down. Hopefully Senior Dog won't do you any harm this once, Jake said, watching with a smile as Lucky gobbled up the dry food. Let's get you some water, too. Lucky finished his food and took a long drink of water. Then he watched Mickey, who was still slowly eating his bowl full of food. He edged a little closer, and Mickey turned around and gave him a very meaningful stare. Don't come near my dinner. Look at the two of them. Can you see? Lucky wriggled backward on his bottom and then scuttled under the kitchen table until Mickey had finished and paced back to his bed for an afternoon snooze. You need to be careful, pup, Jake told him, put patting his head. Mickey's a lot bigger than you, and this is his house. But Lucky was an actually confident little dog, and he didn't really understand how small he was either. He was starting to feel a bit more at home now, and he pranced up to Mickey, eyeing the bigger dog with his head to one side. Mickey stared back, his muzzle resting on the edge of his cushion. He was a beautiful golden color, but his coat was turning silvery now, all around his mouth and eyes. He yawned, showing his very large teeth. And Lucky took a step back again, looking a bit more respectful. Even the teeth didn't stop him from for long, though. Lucky wasn't used to being ignored, and he didn't like it. He padded right up to Mickey and yapped sharply at him. Mickey laid his ears back. The strange little dog was barking at him now when he was trying to sleep. Jake took a few steps closer. He trusted Mickey, but he wasn't taking any chances. Lucky wagged his tail excitedly and barked again, even louder, wanting to get a reaction out of the bigger dog. Do you ever have that happen to you? You sometimes have a little brother or a little sister who are trying to get your attention when you're busy doing something else. Maybe you're reading a book or you're doing some coloring and your baby brother or baby sister are constantly, it seems like they're bothering you and interrupting you. They don't really mean to interrupt you. They just want your attention because you're important to them and they want you to play with them or give them your attention. You know what that means? You need to have patience. But... Sometimes a little brother and little sister also need to learn that you need your distance. So mom and dad can help you with that. But here I think that Mickey's kind of going to take things in his own hands, or his paws as the case may be. Let's see what happens. Mickey looked over at Jake, his eyes wide as if he was saying, Oh, rescue me from this thing. But Jake only watched, smiling a little. Lucky crept closer, head down with his front paws, flat against the kitchen floor, yapping and whining, his tail wagging. He was starting to enjoy this now. Hmm, maybe the big dog was scared of him. Mickey huffed out a deep, irritable breath and stood up, towering over the curious puppy. He put out a massive golden paw and stood on one of Lucky's two long dachshund ears. Lucky wriggled and whined, but Mickey had him pinned. It was a clear message. This is my house. You do as you're told. The puppy rolled over as far as he could with Mickey holding his ear down, waving his paws in the ear to show he gave in, and at last Mickey removed his paw. Lucky stayed on his back, showing off his tummy apologetically until Mickey sat down in his bed. Finally, Lucky turned over and wriggled forward, creeping closer to the cushion as Mickey watched him. At the edge of the cushion, the puppy looked up hopefully and the old dog nuzzled him. With a pleased little squeak, Lucky scurried onto the cushion and sat down next to Mickey. He did keep glancing up at the big dog, though, to make sure he wasn't about to get the air treatment again. Jake laughed. Taught him his place, have you, Mickey? Can he share your bed for tonight, then? 
Mickey sighed and slumped down on the cushion, squishing Lucky up against the edge. But the puppy didn't seem to mind. He closed his eyes and snuggled himself up to Mickey's broad back so he was half lying on top of the bigger dog. And then the two of them went to sleep. See, now they're friends. Where is Lucky? Anna asked as Christy pushed open the kitchen door, the leash dangling from her hand. Her little sister was sitting at the table with their mom, eating a snack. There was a big white gauze square over her scratched face, but she looked much more cheerful. Christy gulped and then turned around and raced up to her bedroom. She couldn't face explaining to Anna, and then she was going to have to tell Aunt Nell, too, that they'd lost her precious puppy. She sat down on her floor, leaning against the warm radiator and sniffing. Lucky liked to snuggle, snuggle up there, too. He wasn't allowed to sleep in her room, but she carried him up to play sometimes. Her bedroom door creaked open slowly, and Anna peered around it. Are you angry? she whispered. Christy shook her head. She hadn't thought to be angry with Anna. Her little sister hadn't meant to fall over. Did Lucky run away because I fell over? Anna said sadly. Christy put out her arms for Anna to come and hug her. It wasn't your fault. I should have taken care of him better. Oh, Christy, you were helping me take care of Anna. She hadn't seen her mom come in, too. It was just an unfortunate accident. I'm sure we'll find Lucky. Dad can take you back to the woods really early in the morning. Christy nodded, but tears were sliding down her cheek. He'll be scared out there, Mom. It's so dark. There are street lights here, but there aren't any out there in the woods. And he'll be cold and hungry. She hugged Anna tighter and her sister snuggled against her. We'll find him tomorrow, Christy. I promise, Mom said. Christy nodded. But how could Mom promise that when no one knew where Lucky was? Hey, pup. Lucky yawned and opened his eyes. Why was Christy waking him up in the dark? Then he sat up quickly looking around in panic. That wasn't Christy. Shh, don't worry. I just thought you might need a quick trip out to the yard before I go to bed. I'm not sure if you're house trained yet. Jake opened the back door and the security light came on, sending an orange light onto the kitchen, and all of a sudden, Lucky remembered where he was. Or actually, where he wasn't. He wasn't at home in his comfy red basket with Christy asleep upstairs. He was lost. He whimpered, staring out at the strange, dark yard. I know. We'll find your owners tomorrow, hopefully. We'll call the shelter again in the morning. Jake picked him up and carried him out into the yard. Go on. Then you can go back to sleep. Lucky wandered onto the lawn, sniffing the night smell and the wet grass. Everything was different and wrong. Where was Christy? Why hadn't he stayed and waited for her? Then he would be home by now. He sat down, raised his head to the sky, and howled. Poor Lucky. It feels terrible when you're not home, and you're not sure where you are, and you're not sure when you're going to get home. Home is the best place to be, right? But I'm sure it'll end well. Let's find out what happens when we read chapter 7. And as always, remember, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss the next chapter, okay? And when we read chapter 7, we'll see what happens next to Lucky, Christy, and the rest of the family. Until then, bye!